Hello friends, welcome back to another exciting literature class. Today's class, we'll be looking at a very interesting poem titled Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night by Dylan M. Thomas. Behavioral Objectives In the course of this lesson, we will be looking at the background of the poet and the background of the poem. We're going to understand the subject matter of the summary of the poem. We're going to be understanding the poetic devices employed in the poem as well as listing out the images and the symbols in the poem. Now, this is a typical picture of what Dylan Thomas would look like. Dylan Thomas. Now, let's look at the background of the poem. Dylan Marley Thomas was a Welsh poet and writer born on 27th October 1914 in South Wales, Swansea. He died on 9th November 1953 in New York. He left school when he was 16 years due to his poor academic performances. His sudden death occurred while he was 39 years after drinking 18 glasses of whiskey. He wrote this poem do not go gentle into that good night for his dying father and he died the year after his father died wow that's really touching now we'll be looking at the background and setting of the poem dylan thomas's poem do not go gentle into that good night is about his son's desperate plea to his dying father to refuse to suffer meekly to die it is written in 1947. This masterpiece was published for the first time in the Italian literary journal Bocegi Obscure in 1951 and soon included in his 1952 poetry collection in Country Sleep and other poems. Now, we're going to be looking at the poem itself. The part one, which is stanza one. Do not go gentle into that. Old age should burn and rave at the close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Now, the analysis of this part one. We see that the poet begins by urging his weak old father to fight death at all costs. Do not go gentle into that good life. Rage against death. He acknowledged the, the inevitability of death, especially for an old man like his father. He believes that yes, old age, definitely he would die. But he insists that even old age should be able to fight death and fight it with intensity and vigor. He's believing that his father can rage and push to fight against death. When we're looking at part two, which is stanzas two, three, four, and five, we have through wise men at their end, no dark is right, because their words have brought no light. They do not go gentle into that good night. Good men, the last wave by, crying how bright their frail deeds must have danced in a green bay. Rage. Rage against the dying of the light. Wild men who cut and sang the song in flight and learned too late they grieved it on its way. Do not go gentle into that good night. Grave men near death who see with blinding sight, blind eyes who blaze like meteors and be gray. Rage, rage against the dying the light. If we're going to analyze this stanza, we see that the persona is making his argument to support his assertion that the dying old man must not allow death to subdue him easily. He's trying to make him feel that there are also men that have, they, they, there is nothing left of them, but they fight to stay alive. To make his point, the poet persona refers to four different types of people in the world who, given their peculiar circumstances, have refused to be gentle with death when he knocks on the door. You see great men near death that are blind. You see blind men still fight to remain alive. He is also comparing the wild men who have caught and sang the song in flight. He's also telling that they have fought against death. 
and the good men too have fought against them. The wise men too are their end, no dark is right. Yes, they fight against them. These are the wise men, the good men, the wild men, and the grave men. Yet they fought against death. He's trying to make his argument strong, to make his father believe that you don't can't just succumb down. Remain, fight, fight against death. And then we have part three. We're going to be looking at the part three, which is stanza six. And you, my father, there on the sad heart curse bless me now with your fierce tears i pray do not go gentle into that good night rage rage against the dark of the light here he believes he has given enough examples he has been able to convince his father and inspire him to change his meek attitude towards them so since there is nothing else to do he turns to his father with him to bless him so that he can be proud of him as his son. And the father should bless him since the father had already given him. He should bless him since he is his son. So, the poem, Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night, is about a son who is trying to convince his father to fight against death despite being an old. So I will be looking at the lovely and wonderful figures of speech in the poem Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night by Dylan Thomas. Our first figure of speech is Oxymoron, blinding sight. This means that aged people with falling eyes see with illuminating. Blind eyes, which means grave men's eyes are blind or men all these are used to fight death in order to add more years to their lives you cannot be blinded and you're having sight you cannot have you cannot be blind and you're having eyes to see so that is the opposite. another figure of speech is alliteration alliteration we have do not go gentle into that good night there we have rage, rage, err, uh, err. Uh. Yes, these are the figures of speech. And then we have other figures of speech like euphemism. Euphemism. The poet presents death in jovial ways when he refers to it as close of day, that good night, dying of the light, and dark is bright. So he changes death so that we will not see it as a very harsh thing. We also have another figure of speech titled simile. Blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay. It means that grave men who are on the verge of death cannot see clearly, but they see actually. And then we're going to be looking at the use of imagery in the poem. Imagery plays an important role in this poem. Close of day symbolizes the end of life. Light in the dying of light means life. The sad height in the last stanza depicts the closeness of death. Evaluation, evaluation, evaluation. Comment on the poet's use of metaphor and paradox in the poem. The poet's use of metaphor and paradox in the poem. So we've come to the end of our lovely class on Do Not Go Gentle Into That Go. Until then, it's bye for now.